This week in AI, search GPT, understanding Meta's launch of Llama 3.1405B, a speed round of a bunch of AI legal updates from across the world, and Apple intelligence is available in beta. Well, guys, I first have to apologize for why I didn't write in the last few weeks, but the truth is I was being held hostage by the work monster. I'm not kidding, my phone tells me I've averaged 4.5 hours of sleep in the last month. While I was gone, I've amassed to nearly 1,000 YouTube followers and I'm here to catch you up on what has been happening in the last few weeks. Don't worry, I've got your back. First up, OpenAI dropped a new browser extension called Search GPT, set to enhance how you surf the web by adding a layer of AI-powered assistance to your searches. When you search, the Search GPT extension pops up a response alongside your regular search results, then allows you to jump into a normal prompting session right after you get your answer. On top of that, if you're using the Chrome extension, you can quickly access Search GPT at any time directly through your browser through a handy pop-up window and Instead of navigating to the ChatGPT website. Of course, there's a catch, like a big fish catch. For many users, including myself, the plugin isn't functional yet and raises significant concerns about data privacy. You wanna see a demo? And experimenting with the Search GPT plugin, it can read and change all your data on all websites. I, I'm, I'm in shock. I'm, I'm honestly getting chills. I'm, I'm a little scared here. Search GPT for Chrome. Who came up with this user design? Like whoever did this should be fired. Where are you quoting? Like this looks exactly the same as GPT. Tell me about how weather works. Okay, waiting for a GPT response. It's not even working. Look, I know there's a pressure to release new things. It is better to just not release at all. Here's this big company that can't even get the response to load. My initial thoughts, search GPT, a complete bust. Let's talk about the really scary part though, data privacy. When you install search GPT, you're giving it permission to see and write all your data across every website you visit. Think about that for a second. What happens if you navigate to a secure app with sensitive information? This is a major red flag and something everyone should be wary of before using this extension. And if you are part of a corporation, for example, make sure that your employees are not utilizing it. Just goes to show that even big companies can fall prey to bugs. Seriously though, if you're going to release something, at least make sure it's a decent MVP. Minimum requirements, it can load. Advancement number two, understanding Meta's Llama 3.1405B. Don't say that five times. This is the main update we missed on my off week, but I really wanna talk about it. Meta released Llama 3.1405B, a beast of an AI model with a whopping 405 billion parameters, making it arguably the largest open source model available to date. Side note, if you don't know what a parameter is, typically the more parameters, the more can do and the better performance. Llama 3.1 was trained on over 15 trillion tokens, which is the equivalent of 750 billion words. And while they built on the base training set used for earlier models, they claim they have significantly refined their data curation pipelines by adopting more rigorous quality assurance and data filtering methods for this release. Two really interesting aspects of their training process for Llama 3.1. Brace yourself so this next 30 seconds is going to be techie talk, my favorite. But if you don't care, just, just skip ahead. They opted for a decoder only transformer model architecture with minor adaptations instead of a mixture of experts model, also known as MOE. Without going into too much technical, MOE recently has been seen as a standard to maybe move towards and even Google uses it in the majority of their models now, but Meta decided to go with a more traditional architecture. They also utilize synthetic training data to produce the vast majority of their supervised fine tuning examples. Meta researchers noted that Llama 3.1405B was trained with more non-English data than earlier Llama models to enhance its performance in non-English languages, has an expanded range of mathematical data and code to enhance its reasoning skills, and contains up-to-date web data to improve its grasp 
of current events, which is something that a lot of models really do struggle with. My initial thoughts, there is a significant ethical debate currently surrounding the use of trading data, particularly the choice between synthetic and copyright sources though. So let's look at that for a bit. Many major AI vendors such as OpenAI and Anthropic are actively exploring synthetic data to scale their AI training, but there are some really big concerns with that. Because they're generated from an algorithm rather than collected from real world sources, the fear is that it may amplify existing biases and fail to accurately represent the complexities of real world data. On the other hand, using copyrighted data poses its own set of ethical and legal challenges. A recent report from Reuters revealed that Meta has used copyrighted books for AI training despite warnings from its legal team. Like, yikes. The company has also trained its model on private user data from Instagram and Facebook posts, including all photos and captions, often without providing users with a straightforward option to opt out. Finding a responsible approach to training data that remains a pressing challenge. Lastly, a speed round of mainly AI legal updates. First, the EU's AI Act is now in full force. The Act categorizes AI apps into various risk tiers, imposing specific obligations and penalties for non-compliance. Developers of high-risk AI, including biometric and facial recognition systems, face extremely stringent requirements, while general-purpose AI developers must adhere to transparency and copyright rules imposed by the EU. Those detailed compliance measures, though, are still under discussion and expected by April 2025. So basically, even though it's in force, they're not sure of the full parameters yet. Second, there are many U.S. congressional AI bills in circulation. And OpenAI endorsed three congressional AI bills this week, including the Future of AI Innovation Act, which would formally authorize the U.S. AI Safety Institute as a federal body that sets standards and guidelines for AI models. The two other bills endorsed the NSF AI Education Act and the Create AI Act, hopes to provide federal scholarships for AI research and establish AI educational resources. Next, more countries protect users from Meta's data usage. Brazil is the latest company to join many others by prohibiting Meta to train on user data, stating a, quote, imminent risk of serious harm and irreparable damage to fundamental rights. Go Brazil. Meta has immediately suspended its AI assistant following the ban. Fourth, some data privacy concerns starting to be pointed at X. As a privacy watchdog expressed surprise at Elon Musk opting to utilize user data for Grok AI training, giving his strong criticism of OpenAI, Meta, and others for using similar methods. And lastly, on this speed round, Apple Intelligence officially beta launched and is available to mainly app developers, but as exciting as it is, be warned, beta launches are notoriously buggy. My initial thoughts, let's look at the new US AI bills and the notorious influence of lobbying. OpenAI's support for these bills reflect its belief in the government's role in ensuring AI safety and responsibility, while still maintaining its position favorably for future regulatory discussions. It's interesting to note that big companies like OpenAI are often very pro-regulation. Why? Because by supporting these regulations, they can shape the rules in a way that benefits them and make it harder for smaller competitors to keep up. It's strategic and helps them maintain their dominant position in the market. So don't think OpenAI is just trying to protect humanity here. They're trying to help themselves most likely most likely. And that's it for this week. I'll see you all next time.